So title is where should we lay our head? So uh, this is question when you go to bed, uh, where do you lay your head? It's so a generic question. You may say that uh, I'll put my head on my pillow, cushion. Well, let's find out. So Jesus replied, Matthew 8, 20, foxes have dents and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Hmm. So what does this mean? No place to lay his own head. Hopeless? A oh, homeless. <laughs> okay. Um, every every country has some uh, superstition. So in America, what do you have? Uh, uh, your superstition here in this country. About uh, 13 Friday. Yeah? Do you like it? Why is it 13 Friday is so afraid of for what? Do you know what the number 13 means? Just another number. Just <laughs> uh, uh, The Last Supper, including Jesus himself, 13, right? Eating together. And in Jewish calendar that falls on, if I remember correctly, a Nisan, the 13th Friday, something. So they, they don't like it. <laughs> That's a kind of a American, I mean, Western superstition. We have weird one in Korea. You, you'll be uh, laughing uh, at me. But uh, uh, when we are little, this is the one. Touch a butterfly and mo uh, or moth lately, and don't touch your eyes afterwards. You could lose your eyesight. It's not only in Korea. We have it in Haiti, too. Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay, so this is a uh, universal. The community also has the same thing. Really? I didn't know that. But is there any uh, scientific reason why? No. Maybe Might not. True. Might be true. <laughs> I'm not going to test it. <laughs> by myself, <laughs> but I don't believe that. And another weird thing is that if you give your husband or boyfriend chicken wings, it could cause him to fly away <laughs> from you since your be his belly is full of wings, right? So any wing, the bird is a fair game. Yeah. That's a weird thing. And another thing is that uh, there is a, uh, a palace in one of the palaces in Korea and Doksugung Palace, and couples in the past would have to walk down this road to get to divorce court in Seoul. Some say you will break up soon if you walk down this path. What do you think? This is really not true. Still, my wife is here. <laughs> we walk to the same, uh, same, you know, the alley, something like that. Okay, and this is uh, some cutie one. Do you ever dream any anything like related to the peak, peak dream? It'll bring you a good fortune. If you have dreamed of peaks lately, it could mean that lots of money is on your on its way to you. So ooh, okay. So uh, Koreans they eager to dream something, uh, peak dream, dream the peak. Either they can meet peak. Either they, the pig can devour you, <laughs> that's fine, <laughs> in a dream. A lot of pigs, but in uh, biblically speaking, pigs are unclean animals, so <laughs> I don't know. What about uh, name in red? Do you write your name in red, red ink? You don't? Yeah, Chinese, Chinese uh, culture, so. If you want the people to think you want them dead, then write their name in red ink. People think it brings very bad luck and even death. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah. 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 Y
here have a red letter day, which means have a good Jesus day or something like that. Really? Yeah. The, the red letter? Red Well, they, they like the color red in China. <laughs> yeah, it's a good luck. Right, right. But in Korea, we don't use any uh, red ink. But North Korea, I can see that uh, they, their great commander, their leader, red letter on is, ooh, I don't know, two different countries now. This will be funny if you believe this, but still, I believe this until now. <laughs> Here, some people believe that leaving the fan on inside a closed room while you sleep will kill you. This is one of the more well-known superstitions in Korea. Is it common? Here? Sometimes the news has it that somebody died because the fan is running. But my kids, they are laughing at me. Now, do you believe that? Oh, this is a good one. This is the uh, uh, Korean version of uh, 13 uh, Friday, 13th Friday. Number four. When you go to uh, Korea and uh, get on the elevator, guess what? Number one, first floor, one, two, three, and F. And five, six, seven. F means four, number four. Because the, the word uh, number four in Korean pronunciation, sa, also means death. So they don't like it. When I was a little, uh, I lived in an apartment. Um, apartment means a building, apartment building, huge building. And we were number five, building number five. Guess what? Number one here, number two, number three, and number five. Number four, four is missing. Yeah, so they don't like that. Um, when my brother-in-law, he moved, moved in a new, new apartment, new home, and his, his dad came to, came to see him and help him, and this is what he said. He said, okay, tonight, you guys will lay your head opposite side. So when the, the bed is here and the, the, the head is this, this, this way, and tonight, opposite side. So it's kind of a superstition in Korea. I don't know what, why, and uh, I don't really know. I'm not good at the superstitions because I grew up in Christian, so <laughs> I don't uh, that much care. But the thing is that Jesus said, I have no place to lay my head. Let's find out. In Matthew chapter 8, it talks about a lep leper got healed and Peter's mother-in-law cured from high fever and the servant of centurion. And the centurion's, uh, centurion is a great man of faith because when he asked Jesus, would you heal my uh, servant? And Jesus said, okay, I'll go there. And he said, no, 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 no. I still have many people under me, and uh, if I say, come here, and they'll come, and go, and they'll go. So Jesus, I'm not deserved to having you here, so just say it. So Jesus praises him, that, wow, what a man of faith. Like this. So all kinds of uh, good um, healing uh, events, recorded in this. And finally, chapter 8 and verse 18, it continues like this. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he gave orders to cross, cross the other side of the lake. And following text, then a teacher of the law came to him and said, teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. So there is a gentleman here and came to Jesus. Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. This is a good motivation, I guess. It's all about our faith too. Jesus, I'll follow you, right? This is good. But let me think about it. 
Would you like to follow Jesus when he's in a good position? Or are you willing to follow him even if he lost everything and even to death? Are we, am I, are you willing to follow him? This is a good question. Mm. And then Jesus said and answered, this is what we read, chapter 8, 20. Foxes have dents, foxes have holes, and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head, indicating that following me means something unexpected thing will happen to you in your life. I'm not always in high position. I have no rest. I have no even home, homeless. This. But it is true because we are living in a sinful world. Everything is a struggle. Everything is war. Everything is trouble. Everything is really headache. I like travel because once in a while, for a change, I can meet uh, new people. I can see some good places that I've never seen before. So take aside my time from the routine, uh, routine of my life, and this is really good. But the flip side of the travel, traveling is that I am going to encounter some obstacles. When I go to a rest restaurant, right? Probably most of us are not cooking that much while we are traveling. Unless you book in an Airbnb or other some good facility. So mostly we have to buy our food. And this is a challenging to me as a vegetarian. You know, Koreans are Koreans eat some weird thing. <laughs> Something uh, unwanted uh, uh, meal. Do you know what this is? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to uh, um, make you hungry. <laughs> this is a padlock Sabbath. So when I went to uh, the Jeju Island, the Korean peninsula here and the, the bottom, the south, the largest island in Korea, is called the Jeju, Jeju-do, Jeju Island. So I saw something uh, fancy noodle uh, restaurant. Oh, what is that? That's good. Let's do, do this, something noodle. But uh, this, this, this is a very special type of noodle. And I thought it was a vegetarian, and then guess what? The uh, chicken? No, not chicken. The the is it broth? Broth? Yeah, broth. It's made of that kind of uh, uh, the sea seafood. So even though we had a hard time to uh, park in front of the restaurant in a very heavy rainy day, and there's a, a barely a space for my car, and even the owner of the restaurant came out with the umbrellas and guided me that, oh, park here and there, okay, and we're gonna come in. And then found out this meal that I can eat. <laughs> so despite all of her Hospitality, I, I should say, okay, sorry, I can eat. Bye. So this is a kind of a challenging part of our uh, traveling. I'm just saying you uh, some example because we are living in a sinful world. World is not that friendly to us as a Christian, as a believer of God. They are even hostile to us. Then, Jesus sleeping on a cushion. Jesus was in the stern. Stern means the back of the boat ship. Sleeping on a cushion, the disciple woke him, woke him up, woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Hmm. 
Now we found, we found out where his head laid on, right? The time of trouble, even risking their own life, Jesus was there. He laid, purposely he laid on his head in the midst of our trouble, troublesome time. I don't think that this is a good picture because it looks like this is the head of the ship, not the tail of the ship. But you can sense that Jesus laid on his head the time that we experienced the biggest crisis, even risking our own lives. This is true because we are not in the boat, but everything is, we can say war. Not simply the Israeli-Hamas war, but your, your daily lives, my daily life is, is a war between good and evil. I, I just wanted to do this, this is good. But Satan and other temptation forced me not to do that and lead, led me to the other direction. So everything is battle. You and I, everything is in battle. Some ruins and devastating, desolate destruction. Emotionally, we are incapable of doing something good because we are in the holy war between good and evil. Anxiety. So many people that suffered from unspoken prayer requests, silent requests. Only Jesus knew. Only He knew what we are going through. Remember that Jesus is with us when we are in a big trouble, time of trouble. Jesus is here, just like the Mark four. 38. At the time that they are risking their own lives, we are going to die. We are going to die. But remember that Jesus is there, just with you. Don't forget. Don't forget. Jesus is there. When you're in trouble, when you're in, the, in uh, tears and pain, torture, Jesus is there. Oftentimes we ask about, uh, 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 like this, uh, does God exist and how can I have faith in a just God when bad things happened, happened to seemingly good people? Where is God when I pray and no answer appears to be forthcoming? Why do the wicked seem to prosper? Why do I deal with overwhelming grief? Especially those who lost the beloved ones. How long must the evil continue and which path does God want me to choose? Even we think that is God my God punishing me? Why this has happened to me? And does God really keep his promises? Where is his promises? He do this and do that, he promised us and I couldn't see his promise. This is everyday struggle. Struggle. We are in the war zone. Hmm? Good and evil. Eli Wiesel, now he passed, but 1986 Nobel Peace Prize winner, Holocaust survivor. Known that all the family perished except him. Some other notes has it that his parents gone, little sister gone, and three sisters survived along with him. He wrote a book, memoir of Holocaust. He was, he was in the, uh, incarcerated in uh, Auschwitz, the infamous uh, extermination, extermination camp, labor camp. In his book, Night, I remember uh, this book, 
and I, re I read a part of it. So the whole family were imprisoned in Auschwitz, infamous Nazi concentration camp. He was a teenager boy, very young. He didn't know what's going on, and he didn't have uh, much knowledge how the world is going around. And there is a story that he had to see some uh, death penalty by hanging because uh, three, three men came out, two adults and one, just, just like him, a teenage boy, and they had been accused of blowing up a power station. This is true or not, but they're just accused of that. So in order to warn the other inmates of the high cost of resistance, all inmates were forced to walk by and see the execution at close range. They'll see the public punishment, execution. It was a grisly scene. A scene of death, scene of evil, scene of suffering. By the time Weasel marched by, two adults were dead, already dead. Because the adults are heavier than the teenage boy, right? So when they got hanged, and because of the weight and of their life, is gone. But the terrible thing has happened because this young youth, 13-year-old boy, still alive and struggling between life and death for half an hour. So Weasel heard a man ask, where is God? Where is God now? Where is he? Where is God? The same question came, came from us too. Where is God in the midst of war, terrorism, my illness, my surgery, my fear, my hatred? But the thing is that execution continued. The lad lingered on. Once again, Ellie heard a man ask, where is God? It's a good question, where is God? When all the six million Jews, they got punished. And where is God? Where is justice? Where is fear? And this is what he said. I heard a voice within me. Answer him. Where is God? He is there hanging on the gallows. He's right there. When he got suffered, we often ask that, where is my God? Is he still alive? Where, where is his uh, promises? But remember that he's there with you in the midst of your troubled days, troublesome experience. Broken family, financial issues, unwanted diseases and illnesses. I'll tell you my story. <laughs> I don't want to uh, uh, repeat this story again, but I got some uh, severe uh, back pain a couple couple days, a couple weeks ago. And it came back again. So I couldn't have bend over at that moment. I couldn't uh, like this position. It just happened to me out of nowhere. It just happened. And somebody told me that, Pastor, you are getting old. <laughs> you are now old man. <laughs> wow. But since then, when I walked, and in front of me, some people, ladies, gentlemen, he can walk fast, and oh, I wish I could walk that fast. <laughs> but I thank God because he blessed me so far. But now I am experiencing some inconvenience at this moment. Humbled me because that reminds me of I'm not 
unlimited being, I'm just limited, I'll be perished sometime. As long as God allowed me to stay here and I can stay here, that's the thing. But remember that when Eli Wiesel, uh, Wiesel uh, remembered that, okay, Jesus was right there. Not as a victim, but he just wanted to with us. He just wanted to embrace us. The time of trouble, he was there. Do you remember that when we were all young and the little and when we walk and maybe Maya and Kelsey uh, do the same thing and when, when we fell and uh, when we have a bleeding, the knees and so on, what would you like to do first when you fall and cry and what is your first resort to get some help? Simple, just run into your mother's bosom and that's it and cry and mo mother is going to embrace you embrace me and okay son daughter it's okay it's okay it'll be, it'll be fine it'll be fine comfort same thing Jesus just died on the cross he knew that what we have experienced as a physical being he just gone through everything every pain we ever uh, experienced and he died on the cross because to save us. He knew that our pain, he knew that our suffering, he knew that our anxiety, and he died. And guess what? He laid, he laid his head on the tomb. Maybe one of the, one of the pillow made, made of uh, the rock but this is not uh, not in vain because he's alive he resurrected Simon Peter uh, came along behind him and went uh, straight into the tomb John 20 uh, verses 6 and 7 he saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the cloth that has been wrapped around Jesus' head. So he laid his head the tomb. And the cloth was still lying in its place and separate from the linen. He died on the cross and buried in the tomb. He laid his head on the tomb. But this is not at the end because resurrection. This is all about our faith. 1 Corinthians 15 and 13 and 14, it says, If there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has, been, has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. So our faith is a faith of a resurrection. Christ died on behalf of us, and he resurrected. So can we. He resurrected and He will raise up us again on the glorious day when Jesus comes back. Remember this, Jesus laid His head when we are in big trouble, right? And He even died on the cross and laid His head again on His tomb to save us. So this is all about our, our gospel today and another uh, interesting hum as a human human Jesus interested in uh, uh, getting some rest I'm taking uh, from a desire of ages like this at the home of Nazareth he often Go, goes to Nazareth, the house of Nazareth, and get comforted from the family. Jesus often had often found rest. The, the Savior had no home of his own. He was homeless. He was dependent on the hospitality of his friends and disciples, and often when weary, thirsting for human fellowship, he had gone. He had been glad to escape to 
the, this peaceful household away from the suspicion and jealousy of the angry Pharisees, here he found a sincere welcome and pure and holy friendship. Here he could speak with a simplicity and perfect freedom and knowing that his words would be understood and treasured. Jesus is not uh, simply hanging on the cross and died because he just wanted to be with us and this through this suffering we are going to meet a uh, victorious uh, savior after this suffering savior. He was on the place of us that we experienced and he transcended this suffering into his triumph, his triumph, his victory. And still we have hope because as long as we believe in Christ, the reason Christ, we have hope. Remember that uh, the Jesus is bigger than any of your uh, troubles and problems. He's bigger, big picture. How often we forget uh, his presence here. My church family, I beloved my church family, just hang in there, it'll be okay. Jesus went through everything for us. He's with us. He is our cheerleader, one of the great, greatest cheerleader to us. And as long as we are with him, we will regain the strength to overcome. It's okay if you are something miserable financial status, some relationship is broken, that's okay, we can recover. If you are really, really sick, that's fine. Jesus is going to recreate, recreate us and we'll all go to heaven together. So my friend, help us to, <clears throat> this is my prayer, help us to, to be uh, remembered that Jesus is always, always with us in the time of trouble. When you can see him just next to you because Simply because you can see him is not because, he's not, he's not there. He's, he's there. And he got suffered. And he's going to give us a better chance to live again. So my fellow beloved church family, be in faith and be happy and be glad. When you are down and the Satan will be exultant when we see, see us down, but when we are happy, and Jesus will be happy. And it's all of our uh, decision that always, always I, I pray for this, and Lord, I just like to uh, put everything, my trouble, my sadness, my bitterness, my hunger, my suffering, into your holy hands, and I'll give it to you, Lord. You are going to take care of it. So there's my uh, message today. And remember that Jesus is always with us. In the time of trouble, he's right there. He's right there. Do you know uh, the typhoon, the hurricane eye? Do you know that, At the center of the hurricane? This is the most calm, right? Calm place. But we are afraid of the hurricane. But the center of the hurricane center of our Jesus existence is always we can we can find the calmness and we can find rest and we can find the the best thing uh, in the world okay let's rise and have a closing hymn together and I'll put the screen 489 Jesus lover of my soul <laughs>